G.I. Joe fans, Joe Motion Videos 82 here. It is time for another G.I. Joe toy review. And today we're going to be going back to 1988 and looking at one of my childhood favorites, the Iron Grenadier. Uh, he was released as a part of the 12th series in said year. Uh, he was on the shelves until 1990 when he was discontinued. Uh, there are, are a few card variants on him, so I will pull those up for you. Uh, one is advertising the Super Trooper, and the other the Micro Figures, which I do believe came out in 90. And his first comic book appearance was in issue number 69, so if you hold on one second, I'll pull his pictures up for you and let you have a look. So, if I remember correctly, after the Cobra Civil War, things were a little chaotic, as things tend to be in a Civil War. Uh, Destro broke off from Cobra. He really wasn't a member of Cobra, uh, so to speak. He was a mercenary. Uh, he only hung out with Cobra Commander because he was buying his weapons. Uh, occasionally, he did help G.I. Joe out. Uh, so, uh, one episode I can remember with the Synthoids, uh, Destro turned to G.I. Joe because uh, Zartan made a Synthoid of Destro and Cobra Commander basically said, see how easily you could be replaced. So, Destro went to G.I. Joe to help them out a little bit. So, anyway, um, when... Destro split off. He uh, went back to his native land of Scotland and he formed the Iron Grenadiers. And um, he selected elite men to do undercover work and so on and so forth. If I could remember correctly from the comic that was shown, issue number 69. And he used those guys as his Iron Grenadiers, his uh, private army and bodyguards. They're essentially the Crimson Guard, but for Destro. So these guys, uh, very cool uniforms, and we'll take a look at that. Uh, they come with some pretty decent accessories as well. Um, the Iron Grenadier, I remember on the box for uh, Destro's Despoiler, uh, it showed Battle Force 2000. Well, there was quite a gap in years between the uh, BF2K and the Iron Grenadiers, so people pretty much forgot about it. Um, so that was, for me, yeah, it's not right. But since they came out in 88, as well as um, Tiger Force and Python Patrol, I had the Iron Grenadiers going up against Tiger Force. So uh, that made a lot more sense to me since Battle Force 2000 was already said and gone. Uh, I did purchase one Iron Grenadier when I was the figure Iron Grenadier, not the Iron Grenadiers, which Destro called his army as a child. Um, I was about 14 at the time, so not really a child, but a teenager. Um, I also had um, the Annihilator, which I had purchased, and um, I had gotten Targat for Christmas. Targat and Destro. Uh, in his despoiler, both for Christmas that year. So I'll talk more about that when I review Targat. But the Iron Grenadier, uh, as far as a childhood memory goes, I was really into model building at the time. I was building model airplanes, and um, I think it was Snap Tight that had a line of tiny jets um, that uh, they had going. So I, I love those things. They're about $1.99 each. So you know, pretty cheap for my pocket money. Um, by that time, I was delivering the Penny Saver newspaper. So I had money frequently coming in. 
And um, so I was at Kmart with my parents, and uh, of course I brought, run right to the toy section. So as you walked into Kmart, off to the left and far back was the toy section, and off to the right were clothing, and the center was sporting goods, and off to the left up front was their snack bar. And um, I went in, I went back to the toy section, and I saw Iron Grenadiers back there. That was the very first time I saw them. So I snatched him right away, put my models back. <laughs> um, actually, I bought one model. And um, the Iron Grenadier, uh, at that point, uh, their original price was about $269. Uh, so I had plenty of money to go around but i wanted to save some for for later of course and uh, so that was my story the iron grenadier uh i took him home opened him up played with him a little bit and went right right into a box because at that that age i'm sure everybody went through this uh, it's just not a unique thing for me uh at a certain age toys are still cool and you sort of want to play with them but when you start, it gets boring really fast. At least for me, it did. Uh, some people, I don't know, you guys may have just said, no, I'm, I'm too old, I'm not going to play with toys anymore. Your parents told you that, you're too old. Um, my parents didn't. They just let me, let me go. Um, so, yeah, it was real confusing. It's like, hey, I want to play with these, and all of a sudden it got boring. It's like, Fred, what do I do now? So it's just a very awkward time. That started when I was about 13. Um, I remember sitting down and played the Masters of the Universe figures and got them all set up. Like, this sucks. <laughs> so put them all away and took off and went ride my bike. Uh, so you know, it was just, just an awkward age. I know my little brother, uh, my younger brother, he was seven at the time. We had a seven-year age gap. Um, he was kind of a last minute thought I was to be the baby of the family. But anyway, um, without any more boring you any further, let's go ahead and take a look at this Iron Grenadier. Very, very cool action figure. So let's take a look at him. All right, so here he is, the Iron Grenadier. Uh, let's take a quick look at him. There's something I want to show you. So look at the profile on him. Very cool. Now, if you remember from the Masters of the Universe, um, Skeletor had his own troops. The Masters of the Universe movie I'm talking about. So keep the Iron Grenadier in mind. I want to show you something. All right. So look at the profile on the Iron Grenadier again. Yeah, uh, there was a little borrowing going on. A Darth Vader style helmet, which is borrowed from Star Wars, of course, and a visor over the helmet and a metal face mask. There was borrowing going on, which happened quite a bit amongst the toy companies. Uh, since the toy, the uh, Skeletor's troop didn't make it to an action figure level. Um, I'm glad that G.I. Joe, that Hasbro, carried on with that look. It is a great look. I was disappointed when Masters of the Universe did not release him. Uh, Cobra or Destro. Jeez. Get my villains mixed up. Skeletor's troop. His troopers. I'm, I was pretty upset when they didn't get that figure. Uh, make him into a figure. So, let's look at uh, the Iron Grenadier's accessories. First off, he came with this red laser pistol. Very futuristic looking pistol. And I do not like this one. I never have and never will. This was used many, many, many times. It was overused in the 90s when they started mass producing um, different, uh, the same weapons in weapons trees. I do not like that gun. 
His second weapon is this very awesome Uzi. Uh, I love this one. This is the weapon that I use the most. Uh, it has a fold down stock. This is very reminiscent of a, or it could be a Mac 10. I'm not sure 100%. I always thought it was an Uzi. It has these rings right here with holes in it that you could put a string through. I didn't really pay much attention to that until I started looking at the weapon itself for the review. Very nice, realistic looking weapon. And he came with a sword. Gung Ho was the first to come out with a sword, I believe, uh, in 87. It's a gold sword, very ceremonial looking. It goes on this hook on his belt. Um, I need to point out something. Uh, this Iron Grenadier I bought later on. This was mine from when I was a kid. <laughs> I took him out of the bag and his uh, O-ring was broken. Uh, you could see right here on his waist that tab breaks off real easy. You see the tab there and on here it's missing. So uh, that is something to watch out for. It looks normal without it, but if you don't know what you're looking for, it um, it it looks like he's fine. So looking at the the Iron Grenadier himself, I love these colors. Very very cool, dominating looking, very domineering. Uh, of course, I already pointed out the helmet uh, and his red face mask. The visor is completely black, making him a little more menacing. Uh, he has this pauldron, I think it's called, over his shoulder, uh, gold and red. Uh, he has black a black gauntlet glove on his right hand. Left hand, he has this gold wrist communicator. Uh, the gold, of course, wears off. G.I. Joe ha or has brought a problem with the gold and silver paint wearing off. He has this gold um, pouch on his right leg. Uh, his waist piece, he has a red belt that goes around. And uh, they even sculpted in, if you could see that, uh, there's a strap that goes around his waist that attaches to that red belt, which holds onto uh, that hook uh, that holds his belt, or holds his sword. Uh, he has these red straps going around his legs. Not really sure what those are for, but they are cool looking. Red knee pads. And on the inside of his boot, he has more red. Uh, these are knee-high boots. Very cool figure, all in all. Great looking figure. Um, very imposing figure. And just gaudy enough for Destro. So looking at the Iron Grenadier's file card, uh, clipped off the card itself. This was purchased at Toys R Us for $2.69. Uh, would show the Iron Grenadier in a combat pose. And that's how he would have looked on the front of the pack. So it reads, Codename Iron Grenadiers, Destro's Elite Troopers. Uh, specialties, Terrorism, Sales, Marketing, and Development. Sounds just like the Crimson Guard. Uh, top paragraph reads, The Iron Grenadiers are handpicked from Destro's personal bodyguards. They are the spearhead of Destro's incursions into new territory. The Iron Grenadiers acting as agents, provocateurs, saboteurs, or outright terrorists impel an unsuspecting country towards chaos and turmoil, thereby creating new markets for Destro's weapons uh, where none existed before. They pay... At, their pay is a percentage of the gross sales. Um, and it's a quotation 
I guess this is from Destro himself. It says, imagine the slickest used car salesman you ever met. Now imagine that he's also the trickiest accountant in the world. Got that? Try to picture what he would be like if that same guy was also a highly trained commando with expertise in explosives, and small arms, and hand-to-hand -hand combat. Top it off with the fact that no other mercenary group in the world wants them because they're their history of turning on their superiors, that is what an Iron Grenadier is. Down here in the corner, it has an H1. That is the second run of the file card. So that one was 1989 or 1990. All right, so this is a great figure. Very nice looking. You never go wrong with black and red especially with a bad guy. Very, very cool figure. Um, this one has floppy arms, so I need to fix that with a little bit of um, Teflon tape and of course an O-ring to repair. Uh, these guys are really cool. I liked the sub team of the Iron Grenadiers. Um, this Destro, known as the Goldhead Destro or Iron Grenadier Destro uh, was my very first Destro, so that one holds very special memories for me. Um, I have two of them. This is actually the one I reviews, re reviewed him. This is the one that I have from my childhood. Uh, very dusty. But um, yeah, it's a, a cool sub team. I love the story behind it. Destro finally got what he wanted, uh, his own army, uh, issue number 69, I believe, yes, had uh, issue 69, described how the Iron Grenadiers came about, it showed Destro uh, going through an initiation with uh, an Iron Grenadier, uh, he was just in street clothes, and Destro was fighting him with a sword to see how his swordsmanship went. So they not only carried a sword for ceremonial purposes, they actually used them. So uh, that brings me into my next segment, Byron's Gripe. Uh, for those of you just joining me, uh, I do Byron's Gripes for entertainment purposes only, not to pick on eBay nor its sellers. I only use eBay for the mere convenience of it. You can find these figures everywhere on many, many very good um, websites. So I just use eBay for the, the convenience, as I had said. Uh, yeah, uh, I don't quote the auction prices because those are fluid. They're always going up. It's only the fixed prices. And if they have outlandish shipping, which some people are doing, they're selling low and charging you, they're gouging you, essentially, on shipping. And um, that's not right because they're trying to make extra money back on that. Uh, I did have one guy do that. Um, when the package arrived, I thought the shipping was a little too much because it just came in a very small box. I took it back to the post office and had them weigh it and give me the correct um, price for shipping from that zip code to my zip code. And then it'd be like $2.69. I got charged $8 for shipping. So I brought that receipt back home, took a picture of it, sent it to the seller. And he apologized and um, sent me a refund saying that he he didn't really know how much it would be for shipping because he was new at it and you know that i believed it and the man was very nice at refunding i figured if he would be fraudulent he would have been fighting with you um so that's what i've realized just in in my experience of life that when you call somebody out on something that they're intentionally trying to do they're embarrassed they get mad at you and deflect that on back onto you making you seem like you're the bad guy so i believed i got a refund so watch out for people are gouging and shipping so anyway uh if you're looking for this guy there are many of him uh plenty available on the aftermarket sorry throat's getting dry coke zero today sorry Vinny, no rc today 
Um, couldn't find it on sale. <laughs> Um, anyway, so if you're looking for this guy by himself, his prices go from $14.99. He's an army builder, so of course it's going to be a little bit higher. So $14.99 is pretty decent. I would put that with deal today. Okay, here we go. Calgon, take me away. Um, $45. $45. Just for the action figure. You know what I call that. I call it greedy. Just because it says G.I. Joe, it does not make it valuable. Yes, there are valuable figures out there because they were fewer in number. A lot of the mail-in exclusives are valuable. Sears exclusives are val valuable. The Iron Grenadier really isn't. He was mass-produced on a single card, not a vehicle driver. And he was on the pegs for two years. He is not worth $45. The gold paint is an actual gold person who's selling that. Uh, complete with file card, $39.95. That, uh, that's high, uh, pretty high. I wouldn't pay it because I'm cheap. Uh, for myself, anyway, when it comes to giving things to other people or helping other people out, I am very generous. But for myself, I really have to justify things. So $39.95 for me would be outlandish unless I needed to complete that, complete my collection, then yeah, I would pay that. But still, that is just a little too much. Um, complete with no file card, $29.99 to $49.99. Um, no, $49.99 is insane. You can get his file card for $10 and buy the action figure for $29.99 and still be around $40 plus shipping. So, is that deal of the day? Eh, not really. Carded. Mint on card, and this isn't a reproduction card, this is a vintage card. 90 bucks, deal of the day. How often do you find a vintage figure still carded under $100? Not very often. These up here, um, the Battle Core, yeah, you can find those for under 100 bucks. Uh, depending on the figure. Um, I bought all of these at, in a group at, in a lot, so I got it for very, very cheap, considering. Uh, from 90 bucks up to 165.99. Now, that's decent compared to a lot of carded figures, like from the very beginning, the early 80s, the harder to find Joes from 82 to say 85, especially the carded snake eyes, which I've talked before, he was short packed, meant um, there's only one per case. So he was harder to find. Um, and Tomax and Zaymont were another that were a little bit harder to find. Not too bad, but they were a little harder. So those guys go pretty expensive and for iron grenadier that's not too bad i still wouldn't pay 165.99 90 bucks if i were really insane about being a mint on card collector i used to say i'm not but it's getting to be that way i'm not a hypocrite <laughs> i buy them uh, so if i find a good deal with something still in the pack yeah i'll buy it just for the posterity of it and I will be reviewing these, so I'll be opening them up, and that's kind of fun to do. So his Uzi, 10 bucks. That is about average for that. Um, I paid $10 for mine um, with my figure. The other one I bought was complete. My figure, the Uzi was missing, and that broke my heart. My favorite gun for him. Um, so I paid 10 bucks for that about four years ago three years ago, somewhere in that ballpark. 
So that um, made it kind of hard uh, when I lost it. So 10 bucks was no problem. I The price hasn't gone up. But the seller is also or having uh, offering an or better offer. And that's really cool. So I'm going to put that up with deal today. 10 bucks is average, but since you can negotiate a little bit, with his prices, yeah, that's great. Sorry, got uh, an allergic reaction to something the other day. My face still itches. Came into contact with a powder or a lotion or something in a patient's room and my face is just itching. Uh, full card, um, the full card back by um, uncut. $10.99, deal the day for that, $29.99. I wouldn't pay that for a card back. The full card backs that I do have, I paid um, $12 or cheaper. So that I see that is something being very decent. But of course, price is relative to everybody. Uh, full card with a complete figure, $49.99 to $52.99. If you do the math, I'm sure the $49.99 is pretty cheap, but I wouldn't buy it. Um, that's just me. Uh, and uh, the file card by itself is $9.56 up to $11.50. So there you have it. I didn't find his sword or the pistol, the, the red laser, that thing. I don't know. Is it the, the design of it or the color? I really can't tell you because it was released so much in the 90s um, with the Battle Corps guys. It came in different colors, yellow and green, you know. I think it even may have come with, I'm, I'm looking up at um, Lobotomax. He may have even had it. It just sucks. I'm sorry. I just don't like this pistol. Uh, especially when he came with something this cool. They were kind of taking the piss with this one. Taking the piss means insulting or taking the fun out. You have a really cool gun and then they throw this one in. Yeah, it matches the colors of the figure. I don't want to go, go into the analytics. I just don't like it. If you do, uh, that's that's cool. Let me know what you like about it. I, I love to hear everybody's opinion on that. Um, other than that, guys, uh, thank you very, very much for tuning in. I do greatly appreciate you guys, and especially to my new subscribers. Thanks, guys. I really, really appreciate it. I find it humbling that you subscribe to my channel. You find my content good enough. Uh, that really makes me feel good. Um, yeah, my channel isn't big and elaborate. I don't have a lot of fancy software. I use a donated camera, sometimes my phone. And that intro was created on an app. So, um, yeah, guys, thank you so much for tuning in and for subscribing. I do greatly appreciate that. And to let the new guys know... Uh, I do hold giveaways. I will be holding another one when I reach 500. I hold two giveaways, one for my channel supporters and two uh, the other giveaways for all the other subscribers. Uh, I don't give away stuff that I would not keep myself. Um, if I find something really cool, I'll buy a duplicate, one for myself and one for you guys, and I give you guys the better of the two. Um, that's just me. That's how I, I do things. I'm very generous. I, I like to take care of people. Hence me being in healthcare. Uh, so thank you guys again. Um, please like, share, and subscribe. Um, when you do subscribe to my channel, as you guys know, I do subscribe back to you. Let you know that I saw your subscription. Uh, if your channel is, identity isn't listed publicly... Uh, your subscription will not pop up. I look through my email every day to see if I have new subscribers so I can subscribe back to you. But if you're, that's just how YouTube does it. I'm sorry. Um, I know there have been a few subscribers that I could not find who they are. 
so I apologize I can't subscribe back to you um, so anyway uh, this has been Joe Motion Videos 82 signing off you guys have a fabulous day remember be kind to everybody and especially be kind to animals. They know nothing but unconditional love. So we'll see you next week for another G.I. Joe toy review. Until then, take care, stay safe, wear your mask, wash your hands. Talk to you later.